Uh, praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Chai, by Hashem Chakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, salutations to the hopeful elect that's fighting a good fight of faith and truth, in sincerity and wholeheartedly. Shalom to the Aqua, which is the women believers. Shalom to you. All uh, praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Chai. And um, this is for those who believe in fallen angels in hell. Sadly, you still got people who believe that in 2024, too late in the game for people to still be believing in fables and mythology. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you will not understand this lesson that I'm about to make. So before I get into the lesson, I want to get this scripture first just to back up my claims because I don't speak my own words. I speak the Lord's words. So for people that scoffers. So it says, but the natural man receive of not the things of the spirit of the most high. So you cannot understand this. You are a scoffer for a reason. You are a believer of fallen angels in hell, a place underground where people burn because they was a bad boy or a bad girl. So you don't receive the things of the spirit of the most high. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So this is why majority of people cannot get this truth because you are a natural man. You don't receive the things of the spirit. The Lord don't sup with you. You haven't been chosen to understand this. And it's OK. Just continue to live your life and we'll see how it, uh, it end up for you. Because scoffing only get you so far. So now to get into the lesson. <clears throat> Cause this scripture, oops, second Peters. So it says for if the most high spared, not the angels that sinned. So we're going to stop right there. Now, if you knew the word, you will understand that the angels in heaven, because that's what you think is talking about. The angels of heaven, they don't sin. They are in order. We the one that we the one that struggles with sin because we in this flesh. So just to prove to you that angels don't sin. And if angels don't sin, then who is these angels that the Lord is talking about? So let's get to the part of the angels don't sin. So it says, bless Yahweh Bashem, I will shy ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless ye Yahweh, all ye host, all right, which is the host of heaven, the army of heaven. Ye ministers of his, which ministers means a servant, that do his pleasure. Okay, so angels, they don't sin. We sin. So when you go for the angels spare not the angels that sinned, let's go into the count of what he's talking about, because angels, all it means is rulers, divine ones, judges, rulers, divine ones, judges. Who are the judges of the earth at the time of the ancient? You had judges of the people. You had rulers of the people. Adam was actually the ruler and judge in, the, in his time. He made him the overseer of all the Garden of Eden. So he will be classified as a ruler and a judge. And the only ones who can be rulers and judge are Israelites. So let's go. This is why the scripture says that precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Now you see that I only read the first line of the scripture. You got to break down. That's how the scriptures is broken down. So let's go to Genesis six. We ain't even get to the rest of the scripture yet. Cause we, we just on you people who believe that this account is talking about angels. Fallen angels. 
So it says, and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, the daughters was born unto them. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. And Yahweh said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. So you see the first three scriptures is talking about men coming into the daughters that was born upon the earth. That's all it's talking about. And Yahweh said, my spirit shall not always strive with man for he, he that is also flesh, yet his day should be 120 years. So this was the first decree of the Lord shortening our lifespan. And then all the way up until 70 is our lifespan. But he said 80 if you have strength. And that's in Psalms 90 and 10. And it says there were giants in the earth in those days. Ooh, oh, here we go. People thought thinking it was 25 foot, 35 foot people walking on, on earth. So let's go into the word giants. And this is why the original language matters. You can't just read things as English. You have to go into the Hebrew. You have to go into the Greek. So when you go to giants. Did I pass it already? Yeah. So, Napayal. Napayal is how you say it in the Hebrew. And when you get the word. So you got a bully, a tyrant, a giant. That's incorrect. Giants, the Nephilim, right? But see, when you get the root word which is the origin of the word, the true sense of a word. When you go into the root word now, Nepal, when you go into this word, Nepal, it means to fall, lie down, fail to fall. Now, when you come down to letter I to cause to fall, fail through down, knock out, lay prostrate. So the Lord, he cast us down, from our estate. See, the Lord is about to bring the flood upon the earth because of our wickedness. So the status that we had in the earth, we have fell from our grace. We fell from our rulership. That's what giants mean. Not the English form of giant means a very big person, but no, the Hebrew word Nepal, which means to fall. And then to come back to the scripture, but I'm going to show you what, what it means to fall. When you go to Lamentations 2, it says, How have the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger and has cast down from heaven unto earth? See, we was cast down from heaven unto earth, which is symbolic that he made us into a very low estate. Unto the earth, the beauty of Israel, and remember not his footstool in the day of his anger. So he cast us down from heaven. I just want to see what cast down mean. Shalak. So literally or figuratively, a venture cast away, cast down. See, hurl to throw, cast, fling to throw, cast, throw away, cast is the same thing as Nepal, huh? We was thrown down from our estate. So now let's go back. Finish your scripture in four. There were giants in that day, which was people that was famous, you know, had high stature. But then the Lord knocked us off our pedestal earth in those days. And also after that, where the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bare children to them. And the same became the mighty men, which were of old men of renown, which mean men of fame. Okay. We was famous, like the same, you know how we got celebrities of our people today. We had celebrities of people in that day. Okay. That's what it means to be renowned. So we have great men. And as you see, so the angels that fell, that he spared not because it's going into the flood. Now let's go back. For if the angels, for if the most high spirit, not the angels that sin. Now, the first scripture that we read in Psalms 103, the angels don't sin. So what angels is he talking about? Oh, matter of fact, I forgot to look up what angels mean, just in case you don't believe me. I got to go back. 
is to show you So the word angel and the angel of Yahweh found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness by the fountain in the way to Shur. So the angel Malaak, Malaak, messenger, representative, messenger, angel, theophanic angel. All right. Look at this. Now look, look, look at this. Look at this. <laughs> Specifically of the Most High, an angel, also a prophet, priest, or teacher. So an angel can be a prophet, priest, or teacher. And an ambassador is a representative. The Lord sent forth sheep in the midst of wolves. That's us. That's an ambassador. You representing Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai on the earth. You are the Lord's mouthpiece. So we just showed you that an angel is a can be a prophet, priest, or teacher also. So we are angels. And then to show you that we are gods too. Not the big God, little gods. Okay. I have said ye are gods and all of you are the children of the most high. So men are gods and specifically Israelites. Let's look up this word God. I'm pretty sure it's Allah Hayyim. Yep. Allah Hayyim in the in the Hebrew. So let me see. Let me see what the definition say. All right. It said plural. Rulers, judges, divine ones, angels. See? Rulers, divine ones, judges, angels. So now we understand who the Lord is talking about. It's not talking about no fallen angels. It's talking about us who fell from our estate. Why you think we had to go on slave ships, be put in slavery, all the captivities we've been through. When you read Daniel's two and read Daniel seven. Prophesy the captivity that we'll go to go through Assyrians and Babylonians. Medes and Persians, Greeks and Romans, and then Rome again. This is Roman 2.0. So now we can finally get to the second part of the scripture. So for if the most high spared not the angels that sin, that's talking about us, but cast them down to hell. Now this for you people who believe that there's a hell underground and where you burn. Let's get context on what hell is. I'm going to get one that I like a lot. It's a few of them, but I think this one was explaining even better, in my opinion. So this is King David. I think it's King David, if I'm not sure. A prayer of the afflicted. So, yeah, this is not a King David song, but King David is usually the author of the songs. Sometimes you have Asaph, too, but they don't say a title. This is a prayer of the afflicted, which that means that could be any man of the Lord. But going down to 20. So it said to hear the groaning of the prisoner. Then the scripture says in Zechariah 9 and 12 that we are prisoners of hope. So we are the prisoners to hear the groaning of the prisoner to loose those that are appointed to death. And that is a condition of hell. But I even got a better one. The sorrows of death can pass me and pains of hell got a hold of me. I found trouble and sorrow. So actually this scripture actually explains what hell is. Trouble and sorrow. See, hell is a evil condition. It's a state of misery. It's a state of affliction and mourning and also death. Because also hell means the grave. Let's see if it, uh, it, it, it tells you so shot a wall in the Hebrew. So it says, so look, now this is the, um, the Roman mythology right here, Hades or the world of the dead, as if a subterranean retreat, including asteroids to image grave hell pit, right? So you see it, 
to all underworld grave. That's really what it is. All right. Hell means two things, the grave and an evil condition. You have to have the spiritual awareness of what it's talking about. Remember, it said that the natural man receiving not the things of the spirit. So you have to have the spiritual awareness, understanding the context of the scripture to to find out if it's talking about the grave or it's talking about the evil condition. So now let's go back. But cast them down to hell for if the most high spirit, not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell, an evil condition and deliver them into the chains of darkness. What is the chains of darkness? Where are we most afflicted yet? At, where, where are we most afflicted at in our flesh? When you go to. Because this is figuratively speaking, which is spiritual. And that's why I started off with that scripture that the natural man can never see the things of the spirit for the flesh lust of against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these two are contrary to one another so that you cannot do the things you would also. Within the flesh, you get sick, you have infirmities, you know, you have ailments in the body, weaknesses in the body, aches in the body. All right. So in this body, this is where you get judgment at. Matter of fact, maybe think it is because judgment is under the sun. And this is where we get the judgment at. I think it's three and 15 or 16. Yep. This, this is it. And moreover, I saw under the sun, a place of judgment. So this is the place what is under the sun, the earth. This is the place where judgment happened, not under the ground, under the sun. OK, that wickedness was there in the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. So. The chains of darkness is this flesh. This is why we have the pain and suffering. This is this is the place, OK. Where pain and suffering is, and it said to be reserved unto judgment. Since we are prisoners of hope, we are looking forward to being changed. We're looking forward to being delivered. So there's only two judgments. It's either going to be a justice or a condemnation or everlasting life or because the scripture says some is going to wake up to everlasting life. Some is going to wake up to condemnation. So you're either going to receive a favorable judgment or evil judgment. The Lord made everything double. But let, let, let's get some examples of the chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Now, since the sin happened in the garden, this is what we have to do. This is what we have to go through. It says unto the woman, because, you know, um, Eve got beguiled by the serpent. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception and sorrow. You shall bring forth children and your desire should be to your husband. and He should rule over you. And unto Adam, he said, because you has hearkened unto the voice of your wife and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, saying the tree was a philosophy. A tree is actually a nation of people. The Lord symbolized four types of trees. You have the trees that bear fruit. You have the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You have the tree of life and also People are symbolized as trees. OK, and guess what? Spiritual discernment within the context. You got to know what it's talking about. And it says of which I commanded you saying you should not eat of it. Curse is the ground for your sake and sorrow. Shall you eat it all the days of your life? Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to you and you shall eat the herb of the field and in the sweat of your face. Which you will have to bust your ass. All right. Which most of us have to do. Most of our jobs is physical, man, especially uh, men who have to work in these plants and warehouses and things like that. Even if you're a carpenter or whatever, you have to bust your ass, sweat in your face to make bread, to get to get the money. All right. To eat. Let's say in the sweat of your face, shall you eat bread till you return to the ground for out of it was you taken for a dust you are and dust you shall return. Now to go back a chapter. Just to show you how it was before they sinned. So let's start from four. And these are the generations of the heavens, which is the records, the origins. All right. Everything was completed. 
So this is the records of the heavens that was made and of the earth when they were created in the day that Yahweh power made the earth and the heavens and every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew for Yahweh have not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was not a man to till the ground, but there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. So before, you know, we sin, things grew of itself. You didn't have no man to till the ground. You didn't need a man to till the ground. Everything was at our um, access. All right. Everything was accessible. So we're going to read. I got one more scripture. It said for them, uh, and we're going to read this again. It got one more scripture for if the most high spirit, not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell and deliver them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. So now. Let me see. I think I want to go to the Apocrypha. So because of the sin, this is what we have to go through now. So it says, because for their sakes, I made the world. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was the creed that is now done. This is us being in hell. OK, then were the interests of this world made narrow, full of sorrow and travail. They are but few and painful, full of perils and very painful, man. There. Let's read it again. The entrance of this world were made narrow, full of sorrow and travail. They are but few and evil, full of perils and very painful. All right. So that's what it means to be in hell, have being in these chains of darkness, because we are in hell and we're looking to be changed. Literally, we're looking to get out of this captivity. As I say in Isaiah 51 and 14, the captives haste to be loose, loose from what? This prison. All right. This this damn body and this damn system that we are in. So there is no such thing as fallen angels. We are the fallen angels within the context is that we fell from our estate. We was the rulers of the earth at one point in time. But when Adam and Eve sinned, we became, first of all, the Lord uh, brought the flood eventually. And now look at us right now. We are not in our glory right now. And no such thing as hell. Hell is an evil condition. And also when the Lord dropped missiles on this place, that will be considered hell. Because ain't that an evil time? And you're going to be engulfed in flames. But guess what? That's going to be on top of the earth. So hopefully, because this is a lesson that could take an hour. And I and and, and Lord willing, I, I did it straight to the point. And hopefully you got some understanding for you um, wackos out there. All praises to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, and Shalom.